appreciate that. <laughs> so welcome everyone and thank you for joining us for this particular session. Um, my name is Tara Driver. I'm the Senior Career Pathways Manager for Women Employed. And I'll be interviewing Abigail Torres, who is the Community Outreach Coordinator at the Ann and Robert H. Lurie Children's Hospital. Uh, so let's go ahead and get started so we can uh, leave, make sure we leave some time for you all to have some questions in case you do. And uh, just before we get started, I wanted to, oh, we still have a few coming in. Um, so just to let you know, just stay on mute while we do the interview. We want to make sure everyone has an opportunity to hear her answers and hear the questions. If you do have a question, you can always put it in the Q&A on the right side of your screen in the Hova app or Hoover app. Some people say Hoover, some people say Hoover. And then you can also put it in the chat, but we like to encourage people to use the Q&A. Um, and then we want to let you know, stay with us throughout this interview, because all of the sessions are being recorded, so you will have an opportunity to view each interview um, starting tomorrow. So you don't have to leave us to go somewhere else, um, because you won't miss anything. All right, so let's get started. Um, so here on the screen, you see a few um, facts about the position um, that we're going to interview Abigail for. Um, we actually, it's a very new position in the healthcare field. So when we pulled the data, we had to pull the data from um, the healthcare education specialist position, but the positions are very, very similar. So we decided to use this data. We checked with Abigail first to make sure we were on point. <laughs> so we use this data to kind of give you an example and an overview of what she does, what her role is, um, you know, as far as her median income, um, the jobs that are available here in Chicago and the growth of this position. And actually, because we're pulling the health education specialist, the percentage of growth with her position is probably a little bit higher since it's a new position um, and it's a very sought after position in the healthcare field. Um, and as far as education goes, um, the education is similar. Uh, so you do need a bachelor's degree for her position and you can pursue a master's degree such as a master's in public health um, if you want to advance in the field. And so on the side there, you see some definite details about her job description that are very similar to what she does, but we'll dig into it um, as we talk to Abby and let her tell us about it. So Abby, um, let's get into it. They gave me some great questions to ask you. So, <laughs> so what led you to uh, become interested in, in a career in healthcare? I think um, my high school experience is the, what really led me to become interested in healthcare. I didn't necessarily know what I wanted to do in healthcare, but I was drawn um, to medicine in general and how like the body works and the science of medicine. But I was also drawn a lot to like the interaction that you get to have with people and communities. And I think that's what's really pushed me um, to continue to pursue a career in healthcare. Um, I did a lot of exposure programs in high school and then throughout my undergraduate degree that really exposed me to different aspects of healthcare and what it really entails. And I think that's why I'm here today. Oh, great, great. So you were a research technologist for a couple of years before you actually entering the community health field. Um, what'd you do in that role? And how did you find that job? Like what, what were the differences in what you do now in that particular job? Yeah, so I- being recorded. Um, I, the reason why I went into research to begin with was because um, my ultimate goal is to go into medical school and one of the requirements, I mean, not a requirement, but a suggestion for a lot of medical schools is to do some sort of research um, throughout your undergraduate degree or even like post your grad, once you graduate. And so after graduating from college, I decided that I wanted to explore what research was. Um, so I found this research position by just going on to like, I knew that Larry had research labs. And so I just went on Larry's website and I looked for a research position. Um, and I was fortunate enough to do a program called Chase Discovering Your Dreams in healthcare um, with Larry when I was in high school. And so I reached out to the people who managed that program. Mm -hmm. And I told them that I was interested in that research position. And I, you know, through their help, I was able to get an interview and then I was able to get the job at Larry's. 
So research um, is really interesting because it's a lot of trial and error. You're just in a, it's basically like you're in a wet lab, kind of like when you see like a show and you see like a scientist with like tools, like we're not blowing things up, but if you don't do something right, you can't blow something up. <laughs> um, but you're working with very dangerous chemicals, you're working with bacteria, you're working with very like high tech machines, machinery. Um, and it's a lot of like, you know, you get like a, a project and you try it. And if it doesn't work, then you say, well, your research team and you're like, well, why didn't this work? And you try to troubleshoot. Um, I really enjoyed it in the aspect of like learning more about science and different like research technologies. And even about the disease that we were researching, we were researching Kawasaki's disease and we're trying, the lab is trying to find like the agent that causes Kawasaki disease in children. Um, but I missed a lot of, we didn't have a lot of people interaction because you really worked on your own. And I think that's what I missed the most. And that's why I decided to pursue something different, which is what I'm doing now. Oh, great, great. Um, so yeah, for those of you who are interested in her other position that she had previously, you can definitely do your research. It sounds exciting. Um, yeah. So what does a typical day at work looks like for you or, or a typical week at work? What does that look like for you in your position now? Yeah, so I'm going to say, I'm going to give you what a typical month looks like. Okay. Um, <laughs> because it's so, you you can do so much. So in my position, we have sickle cell clinic. Um, and it's not every day. It's twice a month for our older patients, which are from 5 to 18 or older. Um, and then we have something called TOTS clinic, which is our newborn and toddlers cohort clinic. And these are patients that we see from the time about six months up till five. And then we have something, we have like a new Lennox clinic, which is sickle cell patients, but they're not seen at our Lurie location downtown. They're seen at another location in New Lennox. So we have three different clinics going on every month. And so we have Todd's clinic twice a month. We have sickle cell, regular sickle cell clinic twice a month, and then new Lennox once a month. And so on days that I have clinic, you'll I'll be in the clinic with providers um, and I get to see patients and I get to see families. And really what I do is I sit down with them, I screen them for social determinants of health. Um, so something like food insecurity for housing, making sure that they have um, all the tools that they need to get their children to their doctor's appointments. We want to make sure that there isn't like if there are barriers in their health, then we want to make sure that as an organization, we can try to reduce them or get them the resources that they need. Um, when I'm not in clinic, I'm usually either preparing for clinic because we'll get like a clinic list um, a couple of days before we have clinic. And so I have to sit down and go through all my patients or the patients that we're going to see, um, especially for our older patient clinic. We have something called the transition program, which basically means that um, because we're ju we just see children, eventually we have to transition our patients from children care to adult care. Um, so I have to I have to look through the patient list and make sure that I find all my transition patients. And then I sit down with them and I have a conversation about transition. It really it's split up into four stages. So it depends on the stage that they're in. Um, we talk about that based on their schedule. Um, and then for like a newborn be clinic, be we. Um, I'll sit down and I'll look at, we have like an education calendar that we need to give to them, like patient education. So I'll sit down and I'll determine what kind of education they need for that specific visit. Um, other times I'm either creating health content, health education content, or I manage our sickle cell social media Instagram page. So I'll be posting stuff on Instagram. I do something called Trivia Thursday. So every Thursday, like I'll post questions and I let like our followers interact with us. I'm going to answer these questions. Um, but that's about, other than that, I'll be in meetings uh, for programs and just meeting different organization members, um, sickle cell organization members that we can continue to work with to make sure that we're giving all the resources that we can to our patients. And I was going to ask you that. I know it's not one of the questions here, but as a follow-up, I was going to ask you, because um, it sounds like the things that you do are really independent and you're working mainly with the family. So I was going to ask, is there some level of collaboration with other departments in the hospital or other organizations? And you kind of touched on that. Can you uh, tell a little bit more about that? Yeah. So 
it is independent when you're meeting with the family one on one, but we have a very interdisciplinary team and we're a very collaborative team. So we have something called um, post clinic and in post clinic, all of our providers get together, um, like our nurses, our doctors, our social workers, we all come together and we talk about the patients that we saw in clinic and any concerns that we saw. Um, other than that, we don't, I personally don't work with other departments at Lurie's unless it's something that I want to like, if I'm like meeting with somebody to learn something about like a program that I can implement into our program. Um, with organizations, we do try to maintain some sort of relationship with our, our different organizations in Chicago. So we stay in contact with Make-A-Wish Foundation. Um, we stay in contact with SCADAI, which is the Sickle Cell Disease Association of Illinois. Um, and other, there's like the Case Corner Foundation. Um, so we try to maintain some form of relationship with them. So if they ever have events, they let us know. We let our patients and their families know so that they can try to attend these events. Okay, great, great. Um, so what would you say the most rewarding part about your job is? I think the most rewarding part to me, um, I'm like a social butterfly. So the most rewarding part to me is I get to sit down with our patients and their families and just kind of learn about like, especially with their patients as they start to grow older, you you get to learn about like what they want to do in school or like, you know, what they like to do outside of school and just like their hobbies and stuff. And it's really building these relationships with your patients that is really rewarding to me. Great, great. And what would you say, do you, do you kind of know, I know we talked about the community health worker position um, and your position is a little bit different. Um, what would you say the difference is between a community health worker and your position as a, a community court health coordinator? Yeah, I think a community health worker um, is like a, can be kind of like a starting level. Um, it's something I, I perceive community health workers to really be in the community, um, either surveying, surveying the community, um, very present in like community outreach events. And I see the coordinator position as kind of bringing it all together and making these things happen. Um, we are both liaisons between, you know, the patient, their family, and like the healthcare organization. Um, so there's a lot of overlap, okay. but I think um, a coordinator position is a little bit more, I want to say like administrative than hands-on as a community health worker would be. Okay. So it sounds like if someone comes in with that basic community health worker certification that they may aspire to your position as yeah. um, a community uh, health coordinator if yeah. they continue their education and obtain that bachelor's degree. Yeah, they would definitely have very okay. useful for my position. Yeah. Wonderful, wonderful. Um, what would you say makes a good community outreach coordinator? Like what skills or interests or abilities um, would you need to possess to be good at be good at and enjoy your job? Yeah, you definitely need to be, um, I, I guess you need to have like good people skills and very good communication skills because what you're really doing is you're communicating with the patient family and then you're communicating with the care team. And you want to make sure that the communication is as transparent as possible, but also very accurate. Um, I also think that you do need uh, good writing skills, um, good maybe like observation skills, stuff like that, that would really help you. Even some creativity, I think, is very useful um, because you, you're trying to engage, you're trying to reach the community and engage the community. And so we have to figure out uh, what, what our community likes, what we can do to um, help them with their needs. Um, but yeah, I think all of this you can learn over time. I don't think you, if you don't have one of these skills that you can do this job, you can you just, you know, it learns over time and your skills builds as you're in the position as well. Thank you. Thank you for saying that because um, people do get discouraged thinking, oh my God, I need all of these things. But, and, wow. and sometimes people don't realize that they have transferable skills. Maybe they're in another job that they can transfer. Um, it sounds like you definitely need customer service skills and that's in most jobs. So, so yeah. Um, so what would you say are your future career goals? Yeah. So um, ultimately I want to 
become a physician and I, I want to stay in healthcare for as long as I can. Um, I want to continue to build, you know, relationships with patients and families and really increase the accessibility to, of healthcare to our underserved communities. Um, I don't know like at what, how I would do that, but I know that's one of my, my like heart's desires. Um, I definitely think that this position is a very good way for, especially for people who are interested in pursuing like higher education in medicine, like a nurse practitioner, a PA, a doctor, um, like even like a dentist, stuff like that. I think it's very useful to, to kind of gain some experience. If you don't want to go straight into medical school or any of these professional schools, then it's a really good way to take a break, get some money, but also learn all of these useful skills. And even as like a community outreach coordinator, I'm not necessarily like dealing with patients and like really their disease, but I'm learning so much about their disease and the way that the body works. So it's just like an extra bonus. Um, so that yeah. is great. That is great. Um, so what specialty as a physician? I would want to do family medicine. Oh, cool. Okay. Okay, great, great. So if someone... Um, thinks they might be interested in becoming a community outreach coordinator, but they're not sure, what could they do to kind of learn more about it? You can definitely reach out to me and I'd be more than happy to answer any questions. I think my, my contact information should be on my profile. Um, aside from that, I would, there's a lot of new like articles on community health workers and coordinators and education specialists. I would do some reading on how um, people have perceived these positions to be very helpful and useful for communities um, and bridging that gap between communities and healthcare. Um, I would take a public health course, however you can, maybe like a sociology course, a public health course, mm -hmm. something that really teaches us about like, or teaches you about communities and about different um, health behavioral models because we are all different and mm -hmm. we medicine very different as like a community member. And so as the person in this position, you can't just say, well, this plan works and this plan is gonna work because it has to work. You have to really uh, look at who you're serving and how you can serve them best, how you can tailor them or uh, so stuff like that for sure. Yeah, and I would also say, Abby, that for someone who wants to work in the healthcare field, because you know a lot of these positions developed throughout the pandemic, right? We discovered a lot of gaps and inequities in healthcare, especially in black and brown communities during the pandemic. And so this is one of those positions that kind of came out of that along with the community healthcare worker and the health education specialists and things like that, um, more focused on addressing some of those barriers barriers in the community. So if you're someone who likes to advocate for um, marginalized communities, or if you feel that you want to do something to help people and you don't necessarily want to deal with the blood or all yeah. of that other stuff, <laughs> I think this would be a good way to contribute in the healthcare field to, to those communities. Would you agree? Oh, absolutely. And even if you're like, I really want to be some in tune with medicine but I don't want to like go to nursing school I don't want to study for the MCAT I don't want to get a three right. AGPA um it's definitely a, a way to stay in the healthcare field mm -hmm. um and get exposure and but also help the community at the same time and this isn't like a a position where you stay forever I think there's a lot of ways that you can continue to move up the ladder you just have to find you have a lot, you, you're gaining a lot of skills that would be useful in other positions. Like you said, a lot of transferable skills. Yeah. And then you learn, you're learning a lot of medical terminology as well without, you know, being in medical school yet. Right. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. Yeah. And you have people around you who are in healthcare um, that you can ask questions about, you know, the different things that they do and kind of mentor you from a distance. Right. <laughs> cool. Cool. Um, so yeah, so I'm going to open it up for Q&A for those of you who may have questions. Um, you can take yourself off mute or you can raise your hand or you can put it in the Q&A. Uh, I'm going to try to check the Q&A. Give me one moment. And Abby, was it anything that I didn't ask you about that you might want to share with people? Um, no, I think all the questions really encompassed. 
everything. Okay, great, great. So let me see here if I can um, open the q and I'm working off of two screens here. So give me one moment, everyone. And like I say, it's okay if you wanna take yourself off mute and, um, and go ahead and ask your question as well. Hi, I'm Leah. I'm a senior nursing student at UW-Madison. And um, I'm actually really interested in maybe applying to the nurse residency at Lurie's. And I was just wondering like, how can you get involved with community outreach as a nurse? That's a great question. Um, I think there's a lot of opportunities to join different, like, so Lurry has different, like, I don't wanna say organizations, but kind of groups that, so for example, they have like a immigration group that really like, they meet, I think once a month and they just kind of sit down and they talk about immigrant needs in their patient population, but also like in the city of Chicago, I, when the immigrant caravans were happening, um, they met and they kind of collected supplies and materials that they could donate. And they also talk about the different healthcare problems associated to that population. So I would encourage you, if you were to get into the, to the residency program, I would encourage you to look for those groups and become a member of them and just kind of weave your way through um, those different groups so you can learn more about health advocacy and stuff. Okay, thank you so much. You're welcome. So we have a question in the Q&A, Abby. It says, how did you find this type of position? But I think you kind of went over that. Um, but whoever asked that question, if you feel like you need a little more detail, you are welcome to take yourself off mute um, and be a little more specific so that she can kind of answer your question fully if she hasn't already. Okay. Well, I feel like you answered it, so maybe they feel like you did too, Abby. Um, the other question we have, what advice would you give someone going into this role or trying to pursue this career? Um, I would, I guess I would say do your research on the position, but also make sure that you have some form of experience working with communities. Um, because that way you're, you're going into the position with really good skills, with good knowledge of how to work with communities and how to build relationships with different communities. Um, I would also say not to become discouraged if like your first you know, couple courses or like your first experience in a position like this isn't what you entail. I think one of the really nice things about this position is that you can shape it into what you wanna do. Um, so for example, like in my position, I have the ability to kind of focus on different things. Um, right now, like I'm focusing on our transition program and I'm trying to implement um, a, an interface where patients can see all of our transition material online and not like on paper, like we tend to give them and just make it more interactive so that they have the skills that they need to transition. Um, but if I wanted to, I could focus on like social determinants of health in our in our patient population and kind of finding ways or implementing like a different program that would help try to lower those social determinants of health. So I think kind of dip your toes in a lot of things and then kind of figure out what you like and go from there. And so I, I outside of that, um, do you know how, or was it easy for you, I should say, um, to get employment in this particular position that you're in? Or was it kind of one of those, because you were already in the healthcare field, it was easier to transfer? Um, do you know if it's if jobs are out there for this position that they're trying to fill right now? Yeah, so um, prior to getting this Larry position, I had applied to Alivio Medical Center and I had applied to another medical center that I can't think the name off the top of my head, Esperanza. Um, they were both hiring for a community outreach coordinator, community health care worker, kind of like those two. It was like an in-between. Um, and so the reason why I didn't take it was 
in all honesty, because the pay wasn't what I wanted, given that I had my master's in public health. Um, but they did seem like they wanted to hire, and especially Olivio, um, they were hiring for more than one person. Um, Esperanza was only hiring one person, but I think there are jobs available, um, but they seem to be like starting positions. Okay. So it wasn't, it wasn't hard. I don't think it would have been too hard, but like I said, um, because I was already at Larry's for this specific position, I think I had like an upper hand over other applicants that kind of allowed me to transition from a research technologist to this position at Larry's. Great, great, thank you. Uh, anyone else have any questions, please? You're welcome to take yourself off mute or you can put it in the chat or the Q&A. Hi everyone, this is Jose Munoz, how are you? Hi Jose, hey, how are you? Hey, I kind of, you touched a little bit upon this Abigail, but I kind of want to, want to, you know, maybe more details on this, but you said you work independently, but also work in a, in a team, right? Um, do you think you find yourself working more in, in, uh, independently? Again, that could be, you know, with the, by yourself or with the patients, of course, with the patients going to be independently. Um, or do you really need that, you know, team dynamic to kind of get all that information in together? What does that look like for you? Um, it's definitely independently. Um, I think while I was in my training period, it was a lot of kind of getting information um, from different sources. I think now that I have like a, a little bit more information on resources and how to do things in the department, I definitely work more independently, which is something that I like um, because I still get a lot of interaction with people, but I also get to kind of do things on my own. And all I really need to do is get them checked by somebody before I decide to like finalize my information. So I'm not like, I'm definitely not micromanaged in this position, which is something that I really enjoy. That's really good. And then I'm going to follow up with one more thing. And I'm, you may have touched on this, and I apologize if you have, but is there an opportunity for growth within your role right now? Is there is there a, a position ahead of you that you could would like to pursue? Uh, or even if you don't want to pursue it, but is there an opportunity for growth? I think um, I'm not necessarily sure, like, what kind of other positions I could go from. Um, but I know for a fact that you could probably, like, if I wanted to move up from this position, I could go into kind of like program management um, because I have those skills, those transferable skills. And you could, like, if you wanted to try something that's not healthcare anymore, you could do program management for, like, a different program that's un totally unrelated to healthcare. Um, but other than that, I don't necessarily, like, know other position titles, but I do think there's a lot of room for growth. Well, I do. I can help you a little bit with that, Abigail. I know, um, as we mentioned earlier, you can obtain your master's in public health to advance in this field. And so, as she mentioned, her field is very administrative. Um, so there are opportunities probably to move up on the administrative level. Um, so when you're talking about public health, so um, the, those are the, the positions where people start off working for hospital systems or, you know, working to be a director or working to be the VP or the CEO of a hospital or working um, for public health at maybe the state level, if you're talking about going government or, you know, at the national level, federally. Um, and so public health are those positions that we're talking about that, that makes decisions, basically. Um, so yeah, so uh, speaking of that administrative piece, Abigail, I was going to ask you if you can give us a little more detail about that, because I know you mentioned this administrative. So what does the paperwork look like for your job? Do you have to do reporting and things like that? Um, I don't do like paper reporting, but I do report to the team and I do report um, to like the director of our, I guess, department, which is like the director of hematology. Um, aside from that, the other administrative part, I guess would really be a lot of emailing back and forth, making sure that things are set in place. Like uh, for example, I made a brochure on one of the complications of sickle cell disease. And so now I have to, you know, get it approved or I, once it's approved, I have to send it off for printing. Um, just stuff like that is kind of what I do administratively. But other than that, I don't do a lot. 
Oh, okay. That sounds like you get to be a little creative too, huh? <laughs> yeah, yeah, definitely am. I have a lot of freedom to do what I want as long as I'm not like going rogue, you know? <laughs> <laughs> well, no, we can't have you doing that and dealing with patients, <laughs> right? Um, if yeah. anyone ha else has any questions, please feel free to take yourself off mute. Um, and here, let me check our Q&A. Okay, no more questions came through the Q&A. Let me check the chat. Okay. Yeah, so we're wounding down here. Um, we do have a couple of more minutes for anyone who may have any last minute questions. Uh, but before we go, I want to remind you all that you, uh oh, sorry about that. So what you're going to do is go back to the agenda and join the overview of opportunity session to hear about our internship um, opportunities, mentorship opportunities, any volunteer programs that we're promoting, and then go learn more about the program of your choice in the exhibit hall. Um, we want to make sure you remember to fill out the event survey for a chance to win a $100 Amazon gift certificate. I wish I could fill that out. <laughs> and then we want you to make sure you log back into the event app uh, to view uh, the job spotlights that you missed. So because you're joining Abby and I, um, all the other ones are being recorded, as I mentioned earlier. So tomorrow you'll have an opportunity to log back into this Hoopa app and you can look over all of the interviews that we had to offer. Um, I definitely want to thank you, Abigail. This was great. Um, I hope all of you who attended um, got a lot of information out of this interview, um, especially hope, hopefully Abigail has piqued your interest in the community yeah. health care field, um, community health care worker field, or community health coordinator. Um, those positions are very similar. And then um, definitely take time out to research. If you're interested in healthcare, research all of the resources that we have for you um, on the uh, Hoover app in the exhibitor hall. Did you want to say anything, um, Abigail? Um, no, just thank you for joining. And of course, if you have any lingering questions that come up later on, um, feel free to contact me. My email should be on my thing. And if not, I think you can find my LinkedIn so you can contact me through there too. Yes, um, so make sure if you go into the profiles on the Whova app, you will see um, Abigail and her contact information there. So. Thank you, everyone. We definitely enjoy you being here with us today and enjoy the rest of the evening and enjoy the rest of the communications with our uh, college showcase. <laughs> everyone have a great evening. <laughs>